I call Chris Bishop. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Now, uh, Professor Tabato is a new member, uh, as I am, and we're both new to this House, just coming up to our uh, year anniversary from being uh, members of this Parliament. But even I know that this Government has a very proud record of enforcing our existing tax law, which, as uh, Mr Tabato rightly points out, says that if you buy and sell property with the purpose of making a profit, you pay tax on it. And actually, as a Government, we have significantly enhanced the ability of the IRD through both funding and the logistical operations that sit behind that funding to go after people who do do that. So his first, uh, the allegation he made right at the end of his speech is completely incorrect. Sir, so in my brief contribution to the debate this afternoon, I just want to focus on a couple of points of contention that have come up so far in the discussion um, from Mr Robertson and from Ms uh, Genta from the Greens just before. So the first issue I just want to briefly canvas is this issue of why the main home is exempted from the requirement for people to supply uh, their IRD uh, information when a, a property uh, is, is transacted, a property transaction uh, takes place. And Ms Genta was very perplexed by this. She spent basically her entire speech with this quizzical, kind of querulous um, look on her face, and she kept saying, I don't understand why the government's doing this. It makes no sense. It makes no sense. Why are they doing this? Why are they doing this? Well, there are a couple of good reasons for why the government has done this. And actually, those reasons have been pointed out in the first reading debate, in the second reading debate, during the committee of the whole house stage, and indeed in the third reading debate. But here they are again. The first uh, and the most fundamental reason is that this bill is a companion piece of legislation to the Bright Line uh, Test uh, Bill that was sent to the Finance and Expenditure Committee uh, only a couple of days ago. And the Bright Line Test uh, will not apply to people who are buying and selling the main home. So it is just not necessary for people who are buying and selling a main home, which in the vast bulk of circumstances in New Zealand is ordinary people buying and selling the family home, moving from one suburb to another or moving from one city to another, not buying and selling investment properties, but buying and selling their main home. The Bright Line test doesn't apply to them and it is not necessary for them to rock up every time they make a property transaction and supply their information to the IRD. It would lead to, and this is the second reason, it would lead to hundreds and thousands of transactions having information supplied to LINS and information supplied to the IRD. And there were real concerns about how that information would be able to be coped with, uh, or how those organisations would be able to cope with that information, sir. And it's just simply not necessary. It would mean that a, a lot of people would needlessly worry that when they supply that information, they may be taxed on that transaction, when in the vast bulk of circumstances, they are not going to be taxed on that transaction. So that is the reason for the main home being exempted uh, sir, from the requirement to supply uh, the, the IRD uh, number. Second issue I want to briefly canvas, sir, is this issue of what does the term greatest connection mean? Because we heard some slightly strange assertions made by Grant Robertson uh, before uh, in the House, sir, and indeed I've been reading back through uh, the Hansard of the first and second reading debates, and members consistently misrepresent this position. So Grant Robertson said that this is an invention. This is a new term and it's an invention. Well, that's a little bit trite, I have to say, because by definition, new law, all new law, all bills that um, are not on the statute books already, and, and, and new phrases and new words that don't exist, don't exist already in the statute books, I suppose, by definition, all those things are inventions. I mean, that is actually the way Parliament makes law. Uh, we put a bill before the Parliament, and if it doesn't exist in the statutory books already, then I guess it's, a, then I guess it's an invention. So, OK, maybe it is an invention, but, you know, uh, that's actually Parliament. And Grant's been here a while, so it's slightly strange he doesn't know that. Then we heard in relation to this the allegation that, oh, there's no case law. It's just an invention. You know, the government's just come up with this out in the middle of nowhere and, you know, there's no case law behind it and it's absolutely unprecedented. Well, yep, it doesn't exist in the case, it doesn't exist in the statute books already. But uh, what Mr Robertson is ignoring, uh, and members have consistently ignored this point, is we heard advice in the Finance and Expenditure Committee that the phrase greatest connection, although it doesn't exist, you know, literally on the statute books now, has been carefully crafted to reflect existing case law that underlies that test. And I've actually checked this, I've checked this with officials. There is a plethora of case law that will be used by the courts and used by the IRD to interpret this section. So it is not true for members opposite to say there is no case law. It's not true for members to say there is no case law. There is case law, and sir, it will be used. 
Then we heard from Mr. Robertson, oh, well, people will interpret this differently and, you know, oh, it's really going to be a disaster. And Dr. Clark went so far as to say, well, I think, I think people, uh, like property speculators, will interpret it, the main home, uh, and the greatest connection is the one where they have, uh, where they make the most amount of money. Well, speculators do that, sir. If speculators try and game the law by saying that the, the houses that they are buying and selling is, is, uh, is where they have a, the greatest connection to and therefore is the main home and therefore is exempt from the legislation, they will very quickly find, sir, I suspect, that the IRD will come on down on them like a tonne of bricks because that is going to be no way of getting around uh, the legislation, sir. They will very quickly find that that is not a particularly smart thing to do. And it's just um, really redolent of the, of, the, um, of the inaccuracies that Dr Clark and others have made in this contribution today. Finally, sir, the suggestion that, that the IRD had suggested one thing and the government had taken a different course. Well, actually, we don't have government by the bureaucracy in this country. I made this point in my second reading speech. I mean, it was, it was very rich to sit here and listen to Julianne Genta saying, well, the IRD says this and the IRD says that and the Treasury says this. Look, the Treasury, the, the, the Labour and the Greens have been ignoring Treasury advice about the economy pretty much for the entirety of the time that the Treasury's been in existence. Dr Cullen used to come down here all the time and talk about ideological burps and, you know, we can't follow Treasury advice and all sorts of things. So they make a virtue out of doing that. So it was a bit strange to hear them lauding the work of the officials and lauding the work of the bureaucracies. Oh, they go, they, you must do this. You know, the government's doing, it has been advised to do this and, you know, shame on the government for not following their advice because, you know, if they were true to their word, then would, we would certainly, or be, like, Labour and Green Party policies would certainly be in a lot different shape uh, if they did actually follow the official advice on a range of matters. So, look, the point is we don't have government by bureaucracy in this country. Ministers and governments are entitled to take a different course. That's exactly what we have done. You weigh up the competing options. It's why we have a parliament. It's why we have a cabinet, sir. This is a good bill, uh, and I commend it to the House. I call Eugenie Sale.